Okay, so we have learned about the idle gas law. Very, and up to now, we've just been talking about a single gas. We have a gas, this gas you know, has a certain volume, it changes its volume, that sort of thing. Now we have to understand that very often we don't have a single gas. The air that we're breathing is a mixture of several gases. So when you have a mixture of gases, you have to just have a way of handling that and, and adding that little factor to your problems. So Dalton's law of partial pressure is a way of dealing with this concept of having mixtures of gases. Partial pressure, by definition, because it is something that we've kind of constructed. Partial pressure is the pressure that an individual gas would exert on the sides of the container if it were in there all by itself. So you're kind of thinking about if you've got a mixture of gases and you're only considering one of those gases, you kind of forget about all the others, that gas is banging upon the walls of the container and producing a pressure from that gas and that is what partial pressure is. Now, if you've got a mixture of gases, what Dalton's law says is that the total pressure in there would be the sum of all of those individual pressures being, hitting against the walls of the container. So you can just add up those partial pressures and get a total pressure of the gas. Okay, so we see it written out in language there. The total pressure of a mixture of gases is the sum of the partial pressures. That would be the pressure that each gas would exhibit if it were in there by itself. So mathematically, you could write it this way. The pressure total would be the sum of where P1 is the pressure of one of those gases, P2 is the pressure of another one of those gases, and so forth, okay? So simple concept um, that we will utilize whenever we have a mixture of gases. So here it is represented in an image form. So we see over on the left, we see one gas, it's in gray, okay? If we just considered it by itself, we've not let the uh, red molecules in there at all, it has a certain pressure and that's measured up there on that gauge. Then we have P2, and P2 is a separate gas, and we see its measurement up there on the gauge, okay? And then we let those two things, and so it's banging on the walls and has certain pressure. We put those two gases together and now the total pressure would simply be a summation of those two. So that's just a visual image of what Dalton's law of partial pressure states. Now, another way to come up with a value of a partial pressure, okay, or a way to come up with a value of partial pressure is to know the fraction of that gas that's in there. And so there's something called a mole fraction. It's a dimensionless quantity because the units are going to cancel out. Okay, and what is a fraction? Fraction Fraction is always the part over the whole. So what's the part? So the part would be the moles of the gas that we're interested in. Let's say it's gas A. Okay, so the moles of A over the total moles. So that would be what a mole fraction is. And since the numerator and the denominator both have units of moles, they will cancel each other out. If we use PV equals NRT, and this derivation is shown in your textbook, how to go for this, I'm not going to go through the derivation. I love looking at derivations, and let me tell you why. It helps me remember what's going on, and helps me remember the formula, because it's like, oh, I see what's canceling, what's left behind, it makes sense that this is what we have. But if we use PV equals NRT, and we have a fixed volume container, then what we can do is we can show that the uh, ratio of moles and the ratio of pressures um, are equivalent. So you can get the mole fraction by doing pressure of A over pressure total. That would be moles of A over moles total being replaced with pressure A over pressure total. And if I do a little bit of rearrangement, I can get the pressure of a gas let's say gas A, by knowing the mole fraction of that thing, what fraction of the total is A times the total pressure. And that that you see in blue is what I will utilize a lot to try to get a partial pressure of a gas. So with those, that, those two concepts, number one, Dalton's Law that says the total pressure is the sum of the partial pressures, and then this way of relating the partial pressure to the total pressure by way of a mole fraction. We can solve most problems that pertain to mixtures of gases. I have this image up here because it is representing for us um, 
a common way to collect a gas. Very often you're generating a gas and you want to know when you've filled up your container. So you take a glass container like we see here that's clear that we can see through and we fill it up with water and put it upside down into a bigger container of water and we run this tube from the where the gas is being generated over to this collection vessel and it is going to bubble up into that vessel and push the water out and as it pushes the water out we know we've filled it up. The problem with collecting it this way is it doesn't just collect the gas you're interested in it's also going to have in there some water vapor and if we wanted to know the pressure just for the gas that's being collected, and in this case it's hydrogen gas, we would have to subtract out the um, information about the water in order to get just the pressure due to the hydrogen. So let's look at a couple problems here dealing with partial pressures. The first one is we have are bubbling some helium and some neon collecting it in that glass container like we saw in the previous slide and we know there's going to be some water vapor in there as well and what we know is the pressure of the helium and we knew, know the pressure due to the water and we know the total pressure so let's kind of just write out what, what they tell me here they tell me that this is being collected over water at a pressure of 745 millimeters of mercury. That is the total pressure. So what's going to happen is inside of that container it is going to match the external pressure in the room and that's that total pressure. They tell me the pressure due to the helium and that is 368 millimeters of mercury. They tell me the vapor pressure of water. That means how much water vapor would normally happen at this temperature is 28 degrees Celsius. That's how much it evaporates into the space above it. So 28.3 is going to be the pressure due to the water vapor. Now what else do I know? I know that the total pressure is the sum of these partial pressures. That would be the partial pressure of helium, plus the partial pressure of neon, plus the partial pressure of water. So I know that according to Dalton's part, uh, law of partial pressure. We know this number, we know this number, we know this number, and we're just asked to solve for the pressure of neon. So let's solve for the pressure of neon. It would be the total pressure minus the helium. So we're going to take the helium and the water over there. So it would be minus the pressure of helium and minus the pressure of water. Put those in. Total pressure was 745. Notice what units I'm working with. It doesn't matter what unit as long as you're consistent. I'm using millimeters of mercury in this case. It doesn't, since there's no uh, units that have to cancel out with um, the R constant, I can work with millimeters of mercury. The helium is 368 millimeters of mercury and the water was 28.3 millimeters of mercury. And when I subtract that out, that will tell me the partial pressure of neon, which is 449 millimeters of mercury. So, it depends what kind of problem you have with what kind of information are they giving me. In this case, they're giving me partial pressures, asking for another partial pressure. So Dalton's law is what we'll want to utilize. Let's look at another problem here and in this problem we have a mixture of gases and they're telling me mole information about them. They're telling me the moles of each component in there and now they want to know the partial pressure of the argon. Well what I want you to do is before we work this problem together is I want you to stop the video and I want you to con consider um, the answer to that question because to work this problem what we're going to need is mole fractions. So I want you to look back at your notes and calculate a mole fraction of argon and once you have one of those answers resume the video. Well hopefully you did that and what you came up with was A. 
If you came up with A, you did the correct thing, and that was you took the moles of argon over total moles. If you picked B, what you did is you left out the moles of argon in the denominator when you were doing total moles. So make sure you do that. So the moles of argon over the total moles would be the moles of argon plus the moles of the carbon dioxide plus the moles of the carbon monoxide, okay? So you're putting all of those numbers in. Did I miss any? I've got the carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and the argon. So that is gonna give me the 0.258. And remember, it's a unitless number because this had moles, this had moles, they're gonna cancel out. So now we're able to work through the problem. What is the um, partial pressure of the argon it would be the mole fraction of the argon times the total pressure of that gas. So that would be 0.258, no units, okay? The total pressure, it says it's 1380 millimeters of mercury. And when I multiply that fraction times that, that's 356 millimeters of mercury. So what we see here on the board is two ways of working with partial pressures. One is knowing total pressure and individual pressures. The other is knowing a total pressure and having some way of obtaining moles so you can get a mole fraction. In this problem, they were very nice in that they handed me moles directly in every case. They might not do it that way, but in this case, we have all those individuals and in moles and we can get a mole fraction and multiply by a total pressure.